Hi again, everybody. Uh, my name is Simona, and uh, I am part of the support and content team here at Flourish. And today we're having our fortnightly tea break webinars, um, and we're going to be covering the bubble chart template. Um, we have a lot of things to cover, uh, so uh, without further ado, I'm just going to uh, share with you today's uh, agenda, and we're going to uh, start straight away. Uh, of course, we're first going to start with um, introducing the bubble chart template, um, what is a bubble chart and uh, when it's good to use this template. We're then going to cover uh, the difference between the different blueprints that we have uh, in the Flourish template user page, which are um, all called bubble charts, so it might be a bit confusing, so we're going to explain the differences between uh, the various starting points. Uh, then we're going to move on and create a bubble chart from scratch, um, and uh, we're going to be showcasing how you can add uh, multiple dimensions to your visualizations uh, and uh, compare and contrast different elements of your story. And uh, last but not least, we're going to uh, provide a couple of uh, tips and tricks uh, to make your bubble chart even more stunning by using highlights and animations. Um, as mentioned, my name is Simona, and uh, here with me I have my colleague Mafe, uh, who uh, will be happy to reply to any questions you might have uh, in the chat. So if something isn't clear, please uh, just um, yeah write your question in the chat and we'll be able to provide some help. And um, funnily enough, this uh, kind of visualization here is also um, using the bubble chart uh, template as a blueprint. So um, you can even create these kind of things uh, with you and your team uh, if you need to. Um, so let's start. The bubble chart. Uh, what is a bubble chart and why do we need bubble charts in our life? And uh, yeah, why are they great? Well, uh, the first thing uh, you can do with the bubble chart is uh, present presenting data, and uh, this data is being visualized through scaled circles that also contains uh, images and text. Now, um, one of the main uh, reasons why we decided to uh, create a new bubble chart template template in general is uh, because we are we were often asked. Uh, from people and from Flourish users, oh, can I add images to my uh, packed circles in the hierarchy template, for example, or uh, how can I change my labels and all these kind of little customization settings and that didn't all exist within a single template. Um, so where this is where uh, the bubble chart template is coming uh, in the game. <laughs> Basically, with the bubble chart, you can, uh, oops, sorry, you can customize um, your uh, colors, you can customize the size of the bubbles, uh, create a very stunning data set using those circles. And last but not least, you can also position your bubbles uh, on an axis. Um, so your users and uh, your viewers can gain even more insights from your data. Um, as mentioned uh, just a second ago, um, we um, have three bubble charts um, blueprints uh, so far in uh, our template user. And as mentioned, uh, the, one of the main uh, benefits of the new bubble chart template is that you can also add images uh, as well as labels, which is uh, very useful when um, you have a data set where labels are extremely important. And apart from the pad circles and the bubble chart and the bubble chart template, we also have the survey template that kind of works in, the, in a similar way. You can still visualize data uh, with circles, but all these kind of different templates have their own uh, purpose and their own, uh, well, maybe weaknesses, uh, I would say. So it's good for you to know um, kind of um, what each template does. And if something doesn't uh, really work the way you expect it, you might actually use the wrong bubble chart blueprint. Uh, but today, hopefully, we're going to be able to cover all these differences between these things. And you will see um, why is the bubble chart uh, template so great. And um, yeah, do you like, do you like it? Um, as mentioned, the bubble chart template uh, supports labels and images, which is great. I'm going to uh, be showcasing how you can upload images, uh, but uh, they essentially work in the same way as in other Flourish charts, uh, if you are familiar with this. Um, you can visualize up to three dimensions uh, in your bubble charts, which means that you can uh, showcase different elements of your narrative through color, size, and axis position. 
And uh, it's a very easy and fun way to visualize groups of people, objects, or events. So for example, if you've already used the bubble chart template, you might actually notice that uh, our starting points use um, musicians and artists and uh, billionaires <laughs> as a starting point. So this is quite a fun thing to, um, quite a fun chart uh, to create and work with. So um, I hope uh, that got you hooked. And uh, I guess now it's time to actually see this template working uh, in action. So we're going to create a bubble chart. Uh, before we just uh, we, we get started, I just wanted to showcase um, how many, uh, how different your bubble charts can look like. We have a couple of examples and today we're actually going to use this data set. So uh, we're gonna um, see this into more detail. But here, for example, we have the 10 uh, most downloaded apps uh, for the last year, and uh, this is positioned on an axis, um, whereas the 20 richest men in the world, for example, which is another blueprint uh, in our template chooser, um, or you can see that the circles are not actually positioned in any particular order. Uh, on the contrary, they're being clustered in the center. So you can always choose between um, any of those two starting points. Um, but let me just actually show you um, how you can create your own bubble chart. First of all, we're going to go to the template chooser. Um, as with any template, you can just uh, start a new visualization by going to the template chooser. And by scrolling, you can already see that uh, one of our bubble charts um, is already here in the scatter. But this is not what we're going for today. Instead, we're going for the bubble chart template. And as you can see here, we have two starting points. Uh, one of them is the default, or as mentioned, uh, where the circles are being clustered uh, in the center. And the other one is on an X axis. Um, the axis positioning is not necessary. Uh, it's completely optional. So if you don't think you would need it, you can just um, ignore the starting point. Or alternatively, uh, you can start with uh, this blueprint, for example, on an X axis. And later on, maybe you decide, oh, actually, I don't want to position them on an X axis. I like them uh, better in the center. You can easily switch uh, from this first setting here, the alignment of bubbles. You don't have to start a new visualization from scratch. So I can easily switch between my center uh, and uh, left, right, which is uh, very handy. And um, as mentioned, uh, basically here, we, you can see that we have uh, the 20 richest people, men for last year. Uh, and uh, once we position them on an axis, it actually makes a little bit more uh, sense, uh, depending on uh, how, do we, uh, how do we rearrange them on an axis. Whereas with this um, a central alignment, you can actually maybe compare them a, a little bit more easily when it comes to uh, size, because obviously with the circles, it might be a little bit more complicated to kind of get the point of which bubble is bigger, especially if uh, they're quite a similar size. But let's go to the data tab and we're going uh, to uh, think about the preview tab uh, once I upload my uh, new data set. Um, as with any single template, the bubble chart uh, contains uh, already imported data, which should be your guide on uh, before you start creating any visualization. You can just take a look at the data tab and see uh, the format and uh, how the data is structured here, uh, just to make sure that once you import anything uh, in Flourish, um, everything's going to work as expected. So as we can see here, basically each of our um, input for each circle is being positioned in a new row, uh, whereas our uh, columns are playing different roles um, for these uh, column bindings here. So um, the first thing you should be um, able to notice is that the label is uh, a required field. Um, and the label in this case, for example, is our um, is the billionaire's names. And of course, uh, if I try to delete this column, for example, it's actually going to tell me that this column selection is required and it wouldn't allow me to do uh, to do this. In addition, we have the color pie column. Um, good to mention that all these columns from uh, here, or, uh, here onward are completely optional. So for example, if you uh, don't have a column to color by, they might all be colored within the same color as you can see here in the little preview window. Um, if you don't have um, a column to size by, uh, in this case, we're um, sizing by their net worth. Um, you can always uh, get uh, rid of this uh, column binding and you will see that now all my bubbles are actually the same size. 
And as mentioned, uh, the axis values is a completely um, optional column as well. So if you just want them uh, positioned in the circle in not a particular order or anything like this, you can just delete this column. And uh, last but not least, we have the image column. And as you can see here, we have loaded our images um, by handing to an empty cell, uh, clicking, right clicking on um, anywhere uh, we would like it, to, we would like our image to be uploaded. And here we have uh, at the bottom, we have upload file. Um, so once, if I click on this, uh, that's gonna bring me to my local um, computer folders and I can just choose a JPEG or a PNG file from there. Um, alternatively, I can uh, always just paste a hyperlink from the internet as long as the image uh, is not behind a paywall or anything like this and uh, it should be working as normal. Um, so these are the uh, basic column bindings of this template. Uh, unlike other more complicated templates uh, in Flourish, this one has only one data sheet, so you don't have to worry about anything else. And um, we can just get started and create our own new visualization. Um, from here, um, in order to make sure that everything is working as expected, I'm just gonna click uh, clear sheet. And now my clear sheet, my sheet is completely uh, clean. Then I'm going to upload my data and I'm going to uh, select my data set, which uh, consists of uh, the costliest disasters uh, in the last 40 years uh, worldwide. I'm gonna click import. And as you can see here, we've already have uh, 123 rows uploaded. Now, if we look back at the preview tab, it kind of looks like a lottery uh, or something like this. It's a bit complicated um, and messy, but this is because we still have column binds uh, bound here, which are obviously not the right columns. So in order for my visualization to work as normal, I'm actually going to uh, change this label here to my column C, which is uh, the name of the uh, event uh, occurring. Then I would like to call it by, uh, by a disaster type, whether this was a man-made uh, disaster or a natural disaster instead, such as um, earthquake or uh, tropical cyclone, etc. So I'm just going to call it by column E, and I'm going to uh, size by the cost uh, of these disasters and the damage costs, which are in billion dollars, uh, specified in column A. And last but not least, my column values are going to be, uh, my axis values are going to be the year of the incident. So I would like them uh, positioned chronologically on an axis, starting with the, uh, with the, um, uh, in 1980 or the first year in my data set and finishing with 2021. So I'm just going to put my uh, axis values to the column F. Uh, I don't have an image for this one, so I'm just going to leave this column blank. And in my pop-up, um, if we would like this, this info for pop-up setting is a very generic setting, which you can uh, find in uh, most uh, flourish templates, but here you can bind the, an additional column that hasn't been uh, specified anywhere else uh, in your visualization, so you can include this information into the pop-up. So, for example, I can include my uh, fatalities number into uh, the info for pop-ups. And as we uh, are done with this, now by going into the preview tab, we can see um, visualization that to me personally, it might look good as it is, <laughs> depending on my story and what am I trying to say. Uh, but of course, um, I actually mentioned that I want them positioned uh, in a chronological order, so I can just position them on an axis and uh, do this by from left to right. And as you can see here, this immediately uh, might actually tell us uh, a different story, which is that uh, one of the uh, disasters uh, occurring in the world uh, that cost the most are actually were actually happening uh, in the past, in the last um, 20 or um, 10 years or so. Um, these disasters are not so costly. And this may bring us to, um, you know, that might be the main point of our narrative, um, et cetera, et cetera. We can create a story with this. Uh, it all depends on your data set and what story are you trying to tell. But having those two options, central versus on an axis, is a very handy thing to do. In addition, as you can see here, we have some basic elements uh, of Flourish, such as uh, um, categorical legend, uh, size legend, and uh, this little um, axis positioning that basically uh, shows us what are we um, 
positioning by on an axis. Um, good thing to mention uh, about this uh, template uh, now are actually two things. So if we go back to the data tab, um, at the moment, uh, we have a, a category to a column to color by, um, but um, at the moment I chose a column containing categorical data. So this doesn't contain any numbers. Uh, however, either, um, even if I actually decide to color by any uh, numerical column, uh, at the moment, uh, the bubble chart template will assign a different color uh, for each different number. So let me, maybe I can just showcase that. If I actually color by ear, you will see now uh, the bubble chart at the moment only has a categorical legend, meaning that uh, the first year uh, and the second year are not actually in a bint uh, colored order. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. And of course, if you want to color by numbers, you can, of course, uh, do this, but you might be, um, uh, you might benefit from using the custom override setting, uh, which I'm gonna be showcasing in a second, uh, in order to create like a more kind of uh, ombre effect for your legend. I'm gonna switch back to uh, my column E here. And another thing that I just wanted to mention uh, in terms of the axis values, um, as mentioned, this template is uh, very, very new. So we're still um, uh, focusing on uh, improving it and making it uh, even more accessible and uh, yeah, useful for everybody. But uh, one good thing, uh, one thing to uh, keep in mind at the moment is that uh, if you would like to use any uh, dates and time formats uh, for the time being, we can only uh, this template can only support the year, uh, which is being fixed and should be um, and like using full date. Uh, should be possible in uh, the very, very near future. But for example, if you would like to create the, the bubble chart uh, today, this afternoon or tomorrow morning, and uh, your uh, visualization doesn't work as expected, uh, that might be the case. Um, additionally, if you would like to use a network, for example, and we use some symbols, that might also be a, a little bit of an issue, but uh, we're all aware of these um, little things that um, might break the visualization and we're gonna fix them uh, yeah, very, very quickly. So one thing to keep in mind, if you uh, desperately need to create a bubble chart now immediately. Um, but yeah, moving on, uh, let me just uh, see quickly the chat because I feel that it's... Um, Okay, I think Mafe has it all under control so far. Uh, if not, we're just gonna go back to those uh, in the end of uh, the webinar because uh, I just saw that I have about 10 minutes left. Um, so yeah, okay. Um, moving on with the colors, as mentioned, I just wanted to uh, showcase in case anybody is very new to Flourish, how the custom overrides are working. Um, the custom override box allows me to customize a specific colors of uh, any specific series that I have in my uh, visualization. So for example, here I can um, go to uh, my Chernobyl disaster, for example, just copy and paste this and put this as a uh, black. That should, that was supposed to work, maybe. Oh no, uh, apologies, that's a, that's a huge, uh, <laughs> please ignore this. Actually, we can, uh, we can color by uh, the custom override um, option only works um, for the column that you have found. So for example, if I want um, my natural disasters, for example, to be uh, this nice purple color, I can just uh, type natural here, type a colon and then uh, my um, hex code. And as you can see here, now my natural uh, category is becoming uh, purple, which uh, considering uh, the, the topic of our story uh, might be a little bit uh, more appropriate than the bright and uh, funny and uh, nice green. Uh, and in a very similar uh, way, I can just go to, um, I can just type on a new line, man-made and even type uh, the word black. And as you can see here, now my uh, man-made uh, disaster circles uh, have all become uh, black, which I think is a, yeah, as mentioned, more appropriate color palette. 
Of course, you can uh, customize your edit uh, and edit uh, color palettes from here, but uh, we have already covered this in uh, multiple different tea break webinars. So um, this essentially works uh, in a very similar way as in every other template. Uh, and from then on, uh, we have a couple more um, uh, template specific uh, settings, but after the pop ups and panels uh, below, everything is being the same as in any other Flourish template. So I'm just going to quickly show you uh, the difference between the labels and uh, what can you customize in terms of that. Of course, you can choose whether you would like italic or uh, normal styling, which um, uh, it's up to your branding guidelines and what you uh, prefer. Uh, one very cool thing as well in this template that we don't have in uh, many more existing Flourish templates is that you can change the case with the click of a button. So I can choose whether um, my bubbles uh, should use the default uh, case as in my data set or the upper case. Uh, and of course, I can choose whether I would like a shadow. Um, and before I go to my, my highlights and legends, I just wanted to mention one more thing. Um, you might have noticed that uh, apart from uh, the bubble styles and the chart setup, which uh, basically um, only ch show, uh, allows you to choose the height mode, so um, in case you're not familiar with this, uh, if you're not happy with the way your visualization looks like uh, in the Flourish generic uh, aspect ratio, you can always uh, choose a custom sizing and, for example, enlarge your uh, aspect ratio for desktop and for mobile, which is quite handy if your visualization doesn't look good on mobile. And you can test this by previewing, uh, by using these buttons here. So if I preview it on mobile, I can see how a mobile uh, viewers will be able to experience this chart. Um, but uh, talking about hide modes uh, and sizing in general, uh, one interesting thing about the bubble chart template is that it actually um, scales the bubbles automatically, meaning that uh, it takes into consideration the biggest number in my data set and the smallest one and sizes them appropriately for every single uh, screen's aspect ratio and sizing uh, and yeah, screen size. That means that uh, some of my bubbles, especially if you have a large data set or data set which contains quite uh, different uh, numbers, uh, like according to which you size by, such as my data set here, for example, uh, you will be able to see that some of the bubbles are extremely, extremely small. So for example, this bubble here, I can basically, I can barely hover over it. And we can see that because we're um, uh, sizing by cost, this cost is just $1 billion, just $1 billion. Whereas compared to the Chernobyl disaster, which costed $775 billion, uh, this bubble is almost invisible. So this is a good thing to keep in mind. Uh, and in case you might, um, you might actually uh, prefer to customize your sizing of the bubbles, that's where the bubble chart um, scatter plot comes in handy. Because if I quickly just uh, show you this, here uh, in, under the very first setting, you can see that we can specify a minimum, a maximum size, and we can also choose whether to scale dots based on the um, aspect ratio of our visualization. So I can choose my minimum size to be 50, and immediately you will see that my bubbles became uh, bigger. So this is one of the main differences between uh, the bubble chart template and different uh, bubble chart starting points. And uh, yeah, in case you, you, you find your bubbles extremely small, you can always opt for uh, a different alternative. Um, and um, in terms of uh, the highlights, uh, moving on to uh, the very basic settings uh, in the bubble chart, um, one good thing that not uh, too many other templates uh, actually have is the highlights of my bubbles, uh, which is very fun and very um, useful, especially if you would like to create a story where, for example, you first show uh, this, your whole visualization that you've just created. And then let's say we just want to focus on uh, specific um, uh, bubbles of our story, such as uh, the man-made disasters, for example. And here I can highlight specific bubbles uh, and change the opacity of both the highlighted bubble and of all the others. So for example, here I can choose my opacity to be basically 0.1. And I can go uh, to my data tab, copy the churn of your disaster cell and put it here. And you will see that now only this particular disaster is being highlighted. 
Um, this is this is very nice. Uh, of course, if you have images, you can show pictures on your highlighted bubbles, which completely enhances uh, kind of the the bubble that you have uh, selected and highlighted. And um, it's to me personally, it's a very good way to kind of narrate uh, the viewer uh, into the direction you would like to your story to go. Um, and then um, I'm not going to focus too much into uh, the legends and uh, pop-ups and tunnel settings because, uh, as mentioned previously, these are quite um, popular amongst all of our other templates. Uh, but uh, here um, you can basically uh, decide whether you would like to um, um, position all your legends uh, horizontally, vertically, uh, whether you would like uh, your uh, swatches to be boldened, and uh, you can disable different legends uh, separately. So, for example, if I want my size legend turned off, but my color legend uh, to, to stay, I can just click on uh, disable, and this is um, going to solve my problem. Um, and then, uh, again, pop-ups and panels, number formatting, all these things uh, can be uh, discovered in other Flourish templates. Um, but for example, here, just to showcase uh, in the number formatting, I can simply put the prefix of uh, dollar and the suffix of billion. And you will see that now all my pop-ups have, uh, like, were, have been customized. And uh, now the viewer can actually see uh, what are we sizing by, um, and that this is a currency of a dollar and it's in billions of dollars. Um, so I kind of rushed through uh, the last couple of bits uh, of um, this uh, template, but I just love it too much. There is too much to cover. Um, we have uh, highlighted the, uh, the bubble highlights, <laughs> uh, but uh, basically you can see here how the animation and the story uh, is really uh, creating a nice, very cool uh, narrative and of course it's all interactive. And here we can actually see some highlighted bubbles uh, and Disney films. Um, but in the last two minutes left of my time, I just want to actually focus your attention into something a little bit uh, quite important actually. Uh, and this is bubble trouble, or <laughs> the, the way we called it. So um, the bubble charts in general, any bubble chart and any circle um, in a visual, data visualization might be a bit uh, more complicated to be grasped by a non-experienced audience. Uh, and this is a good thing to keep in mind. Um, therefore, uh, we have provided you with a few tips to uh, just keep in mind when you're creating any bubble chart visualization, such as uh, labeling and appropriate colors, which are extremely important when it comes to uh, your chart's communication abilities and the story you would like to uh, tell. Uh, in addition, as uh, showcased, you can uh, tell so much by your legends, uh, by using color swatches, uh, by uh, coloring your uh, visualization appropriately, etc. Um, and uh, yeah, by coloring, uh, by category coloring uh, your visualization, you're basically um, showcasing one dimension without overcrowding your chart. And talking about overcrowding, another very important bit, especially for the bubble charts, is the pop-ups, um, which are extremely useful and important when it comes to uh, displaying the actual accurate size of each bubble. Because as mentioned, when it comes to uh, some particular bubbles that are having very little difference between them uh, in terms of size, it might be actually very complicated for the human eye to distinguish between them uh, in the same way that we would do with a bar chart, for example. So um, that was uh, everything in terms of the bubble chart. I am hoping that it's okay for me to overrun a little bit, so maybe we can stay and answer some questions you might have. Um, but before we uh, do this, uh, I just wanted to say that we this um, uh, tea break webinar is of course going to be uh, recorded and uh, posted on YouTube. So uh, you can always uh, watch it uh, back if uh, you would like to. Then we have some resources here that I could share um, and uh, some help docs that might be useful when it comes to the bubble chart template. And um, as always, we would love to see you on our next webinar, which is going to be on the 29th of March, where uh, we're going to be uh, covering the very important topic of making your data visualization projects more accessible. So uh, please feel free to register and join our webinar. It's going to be on the same time, 3 p.m. UK time. And uh, yeah, we would love to see you there.